Healer, awesome in power. 
power of prayer. Amen to that? Amen. Amen. Um, in light of that, I want to ask you all once again to join with me as we start our worship this morning in praying our breakthrough prayer together. Let's pray. God, God of abundance, open our hearts and minds to this season and always. Transform and send us. we experienced the autumnal equinox. That day each year when night catches up with day. When we're looking in the sky, the sun appears to cross the celestial equator, which is an imaginary line in the sky above the Earth's equator. And at the moment of that crossing, 
the Earth's axis is neither tilting away from nor towards the sun, which is what gives us that equal time in sunlight and in moonlight. And then it's fall. Now, you can practically feel the air getting crisper, right? Okay, well, I'll give you maybe not this week, but next week you will. (laughs) It's like the earth itself is taking in a deep breath, exhaling that humidity and heat of summer. The atmosphere gets a little lighter. It's a little easier to breathe. You feel like you can think more clearly, almost as if that mist that is summer has been wiped off the lens of the world. And think for a minute about the trees. Our trees are the first ones to catch on to the change that is coming. Those once bright green leaves start to look like they've been dipped in hues of yellow and orange, and eventually that deep burning red. It's as if they're having one last grand celebration before they shed their leaves and hunker down for winter. You see, the the whole landscape turns into an artist's palette. Colors blending, yet they're still distinct, capturing the beauty and fleetingness of time itself. And then after the autumnal equinox, we have earlier sunsets and later sunrises. It gets dark earlier, and it stays dark longer. We can don our sweaters and flannels and gather around bonfires, sharing stories and and roasting marshmallows. We've had at least one request for s'mores this morning. (laughs) And you know, it's almost Halloween. Now, I know many folks who don't particularly like Halloween, and I know many people who absolutely love it. Now, regardless where you fall on that spectrum, seeing how Halloween is the second most celebrated holiday of the entire year, it's really hard to escape its influence on our culture. I remember, for example, as a little girl, wanting to read ghost stories every single night through the month of October. Now, from one of those scholastic book orders, do they still have those scholastic? Okay. From one of those scholastic book orders at school, I got a book that was titled the thing at the foot of the bed and other scary stories. Did anybody else have that one? I loved that book. And it had just enough stories in it that I could read one each night throughout October when I was snuggled down in my bed. Yeah, snuggled down in my bed. And my mom wondered why I had such a hard time sleeping when the seasons changed. You see, the, the, the truth is, since ancient times, people have been telling ghost stories. And most of those scary stories start in the dark of the night. But today, today I want to talk about how we as Christ followers, we have the promise that there is always light in the darkness. In the darkness of of fear, uncertainty, and anxiety, Christ's light gives us hope, and it's a hope that we can share. So, so let me tell you a story. It's about a, a young girl named Emily who lived in a small, quiet town. Now, Emily was a bright child. She loved to read, loved to explore, and to just be a kid. But she had one fear that just gripped her heart, the darkness. You see, her her bedroom had this old closet, and it was a closet that creaked, a closet that never closed fully, almost like it was inviting her to peer into its depths. And night after night, she would lie in bed, staring at the little nightlight next to the bed and then at the closet, as if expecting it to come alive. Now, her nightlight was comforting, but it wasn't strong enough to fend off that ominous feeling that the darkness gave her. Now Emily's mom tried to help. She filled her room with additional light, told her stories of bravery, but that fear, it still persisted. 
until one night she said, enough. And armed with just a little flashlight and her favorite book, Emily turned off her nightlight and bravely opened that closet door wide. Now guess what she found in there? Monsters. No, I'm kidding. No monsters. <laughs> there were old toys. There were clothes that she no longer wore. And that so-called monster, it was just a coat hanging down in a peculiar way on a hanger. Now she sat down in that closet, flashlight in hand, and started to read. The darkness that once felt threatening, now almost seemed friendly, maybe even peaceful. So from that point on, when I, oh wait, Emily, would find herself <laughs> fearful of the dark, she'd take her flashlight, sit down in that closet, open a book, and feel that fear begin to fade into a sense of peace. Now how about you all? Are you kept up at night in fear of things that go bump? Are your sweet dreams sometimes filled with nightmares? You know, sleep can be both a comfort and a battlefield. It's a place where we can rest, rejuvenate, and escape the chaos of daily life. But sometimes, sometimes it can also be a setting where our anxieties, our fears, and the darkest parts of our imagination come to life. Now, maybe some of you have heard this, this old Scottish prayer for late night jitters. It goes like this. From ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord, deliver us. You know, it's, it's almost humorous. But the prayer speaks to a truth that I think we've all felt at some point. That the, the dark can be unsettling, that the quiet of the night can, can sometimes amplify the loudest fears that are in our hearts. So if you have ever felt that way, know that you are not alone. But also know that we, we are promised something incredible in the midst of all of it. You see, we are promised a light that shines through all of the shadows, all of the fears, all of those things that go bump in the night. Now, light and, and darkness are, are powerful symbols, not just in our lives, but also in our scriptures. Scripture often paints this dramatic contrast between the two. It, and why? Because darkness and light aren't just physical states. They are spiritual and emotional and, and each of us has experienced them in some form and probably still do from time to time. Now, there are, there are so many places within our scripture where we see a direct link between life and light. Now, we're just not talking about that biological life here, but, but a fuller life, a more complete life, a life that is filled with meaning and with purpose. Now, one such passage is the, uh, this week's scripture from the Gospel of John. Now, it may be well familiar to some of you, and, and perhaps the most familiar wording that we're used to is from the NRSV translation. That's what's in your, in your pew Bibles. There, in the NRSV, the passage reads, In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, it is so rich in language, so rich in meaning. But I have to tell you that I absolutely love the message translation of this passage. You can see that the message reads, the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. Now, you, you notice the, the capitalization there? That life and light aren't just any forms of existence. It's not just any form of illumination. They refer 
to the life and the light that comes from Christ alone. And my friends, that light has the power to displace all of the ghoulies, ghosties, and things that go bump in our lives. Our fears, our insecurities, those moments when we're unsure of our next steps, they are displaced by the life light of Christ. And they don't stand a chance. Now here's a, a, another really wonderful thing. People are naturally drawn to the light. I mean, have you ever noticed how a, a single candle can capture everyone's attention if it's in a dark room? Light serves as this incredible hope, incredible symbol of hope throughout the Gospels. When, when Christ enters the scene, the darkness doesn't just recede, it's, it's vanquished. That light, Christ's light, helps us to find our way when we're lost, to find hope when we're downtrodden, and to find clarity when everything else in the world seems muddled. You see, through his divine illumination, we are drawn closer to God, and we get a glimpse of how magnificent life can be when it is lived in that light that is Christ. We heard that the life light isn't static. It blazes. It is dynamic. It is active. It's transformative. And that light, it's not just for some of us. It is for all of us. Now, whether you're, you're dealing with something deeply personal or, or facing challenges on a grand scale, that light is there, guiding your way, filling your life with hope and with purpose. Now, there is absolutely no question that life remains full of ups and downs. We all face moments that feel overwhelming, times that are just downright hard. But it is precisely in those moments, those moments of darkness in our lives, that an opportunity arises. Let's think, what, what if we viewed the darkness a little bit differently? Instead of allowing it to be a, a cavern of fear and uncertainty, what if we used it as a canvas of faith? I want to invite you all to, to reimagine your moments of darkness, not as instances of dread, but as opportunities for transformative faith. I mean, think about it. What if in, instead of recoiling into the shadows when we face that darkness, we leaned in to the movement of God? What if we were able to, to settle into a comfortable space where we could just rest in God's care and protection? You see, sometimes it takes darkness for us to really focus to quiet that background noise of our lives and to pay attention to the more tender nudgings that come to us from God. And now let's take it just a step further. What if we trusted, I mean truly trusted, that God's presence would be even more available to us when we are navigating through dark times? Whether it's the, the literal darkness of the night or, or thoughts that get too loud or the metaphorical darkness of a tough life situation. What if we saw these as prime moments to experience God in a deeper way? Because I don't, I don't know about you all, but, but some of my most intense moments of connection with God 
have come when I was just downright scared. When I'm unsure of what that next step is or, or uncertain about the future, it seems that that is when my prayers gain a, a level of urgency and sincerity, sincerity that I almost hate to admit, to admit isn't always there in the day-to-day. It's like that, that darkness strips away all of the superficialness of life. And I am left with raw, honest dialogue with God. So, my friends, as we sit here today, I want to issue a challenge to each and every one of you. Don't just wait for that light to find comfort. Find God in the midst of the darkness, too. Allow your fears to become a a, a catalyst for a richer, deeper, and more trusting relationship with God. Trust that even in your most fearful, your most vulnerable moments, you are never alone. You're enveloped in God's care, wrapped in God's love, and illuminated by God's light. But, hey, let's, let's not forget that this is a journey that we are not meant to walk alone. There is a tremendous power in community, especially a community of faith. You know, it's, it's often when we've, we've hit a wall. I know for me, when I feel like I've exhausted my own solutions, that I find myself turning to God. And sometimes, God's presence comes in the form of a friend, a family member, a, a, a church member, someone who can sit with me in that darkness and point me toward the light. So if you find yourself wrestling with big questions or unsettling fears, especially in those quiet moments of the night, don't keep it all bottled up. Reach out to a friend in your faith community. Sometimes the very act of talking through our fears and praying with someone else can transform those scary, overwhelming thoughts. It not only divides the burden, but it multiplies the hope. And this brings us to a a crucial question for today. How is it that we, we collectively as a community, are living in a way that reflects the light of Christ into the world? How are we embodying that hope? For others. You see, when we reach out to support each other, we're not just combating our own darkness, but we're pushing back the darkness for someone else too. We become vessels of the life light, extending the the comforting, all encompassing glow of Christ's love and hope into the lives of those around us. So as we, we go about our days, as we enter this fall season, and as we inevitably face those tough nights, let's challenge ourselves to be beacons of God's light. Let's offer hope where there's despair and bring peace where there's discord and share love where there's indifference. Because the more light that we bring into the world, the less room there is for darkness. Amen? Amen. Now we we come to the time in our, our worship service today where we prepare to engage in one of the most beautiful acts of community, the sharing of communion. 
And today isn't just any Communion Sunday. It is World Communion Sunday. You see, around the globe today, in places of light and in places of darkness, communities are gathering just like us to remember and to celebrate the everlasting light of Christ. And the table here, the table here isn't just our table. It is a table that spans continents, languages, and cultures. It's a table that brings light to places steeped in darkness, offers hope where there is despair, and builds bridges where walls have been erected. Just as we've talked about today, letting our fears be transformed by the light of faith, let this communion act as a physical manifestation of that transformation. As we partake in the bread and the cup, may we not only be nourished by it, but also be reminded in the sharing of this meal, we are receiving and extending the light of the world. We're acknowledging that no matter where we are, in moments of darkness or light, Christ is there, connecting us all as one global community. So, holy God, on this World Communion Sunday, we are reminded that this table stretches across continents, reaches all your children, wherever they may be. And as we partake in this bread and cup, we are united in you, our light and our life. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we ask, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Now I'd like to ask those who are helping with communion this morning to come forward. The table is set. Please come. to the 
pray. God of everlasting light, we give you thanks for this sacred moment, for this holy meal that nourishes not just our bodies but our very souls. We are reminded today that your table knows no boundaries and your love knows no limits. We thank you for the life and light you have brought into this world through Christ, your Son. May the grace we've received here carry us through our moments of darkness, transforming our fear into faith and our doubt into devotion. Lord, we also lift up those who couldn't be here today, those who are yearning for your light in the midst of their own personal darkness. Reach out to them, God, wherever they are, whether they're battling illness, 
going through tough times or simply lost. Let them feel your presence, your comfort, and your love. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember our siblings in faith across the globe, from places of plenty to those of scarcity, and from communities of peace to lands ravaged by conflict. May your light shine. Strengthen our hearts to be your hands and your feet, carrying the light of Christ into every corner of the world. Lord, as we prepare to leave this sacred space, equip us to be ambassadors of your light. Help us to recognize you in the faces of those we meet and serve, knowing that each act of kindness, each word of comfort, each gesture of love dispels the darkness bit by bit. Now in the spirit of unity and love, we join together for a moment in silent prayer, offering up our personal thanks, our hopes, and our petitions. God of all nations and all peoples, hear the prayers of your church. As we venture forth, may we be beacons of your transformative light, always and everywhere. And now, just as Christ has taught us, let us join our voices in the prayer that unites believers across the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you all once again to, to stand as you're led and able to dance, to clap, to sing, to just be in the presence of our Lord as we sing. All the people said amen.
I knew y'all could do it. <laughs> now, may the God who illuminates the darkness guide your steps in this coming week. May you be a beacon of love and hope and peace, reflecting the light that no darkness can overcome. Let's go change the world. Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Whoa.